Hey everybody, today I want to look at one of the basic principles inside logic. This is something that when I first started using logic and over the years, it's always kind of thrown me a little bit. So I wanted to just go through some of the basics of track selection. This is something that can be really confusing if you're not paying attention and sometimes it might do things you're not expecting. But as long as you get into the rhythm of how logic sees this, you're going to really have some benefits from it. So first and foremost, I can select any of my tracks and it's going to switch to that instrument. When a single track is selected, it's called the focus track or the track in focus. And that becomes really useful because it means I can really easily go through and choose a track I want to play. Now, Part of the hard thing about this becomes later on, once we have a bunch of tracks, because it may look like a track is selected, but it may not be the one that's actually in focus. So let's select all of them. And now you'll see on the left, one, one of the tracks, the first one, the, the number area lit up a little brighter. And I can choose different ones from that. Now if I play this, See how even though all of them are selected, only the piano is playing? because it's the one that's in focus. If I were to record... Push stop. You're going to see that the track that was in focus, even though they're all selected, is the one that was recorded. Now this is where it gets a little interesting. Because I can have one track selected, which is the focus track, and I can choose another one just with the record button. It's a little different record button. This one is the bright red one with the white R. This one stays gray and has the red R. So let's delete that and go back and we'll record. You'll hear both of them, both instruments play. But the piano, because it was the secondary record arm track, gets a, an alias. So this track, this little region here on their track, is essentially a reference to the other instrument. Now, if I come through here, I can move one of my set of files there, and it's going to trigger the same way in the piano. So one of the biggest benefits to working this way is that I can do layered parts that I want to have uh, mimic each other, and I can just go through the whole production and say I notice there's one wrong note. I can just go fix the one wrong note in the original region and the other ones are all going to follow it. Now, they're not permanent like that if we don't want them to be. For instance, I can come through here and we could take uh, that particular file and we could say let's make a convert alias to a copy and now they are separate files. So if I change something in this note, these notes here, just hit delete, you'll notice that it doesn't delete it in the other region. Let's undo that for a second. If I'm with this one and I double click on it, you can see an alias cannot be edited. We can either do a real copy or we can edit the original region. So this is going to open up the other one. So I can get to the other one this way. It's pretty handy to get back and forth. That doesn't really help us all the time, though. One of the things about logic that is so dumb, and I mean with a capital D, uh, is that if we have multiple keyboards or something attached here, say I want to come over here to my track header, for this, uh, we'll do the piano for a second. MIDI channel, I can set it between one of the 16 MIDI channels, right? 
but I can't actually set an input here in my track properties. I can't say, I want this to be this one keyboard, and I want this next track to be a different keyboard. Almost every DAW can do that except Logic. So there is one setting here where we can come in. Let's go into our project settings under recording, where we can auto demix by channel if multi-track recording MIDI. So if I turn that on, it's off by default. Now, you'll see one big difference here when I'm selecting the different tracks like this. It looks like it's just going to the, the smaller R, record enabled. But we're going to record both of these tracks. And you'll see right now, we're not getting both of them. This essentially breaks that whole system of creating the aliases. The only way that this would work is if we come through and with this track, we say, I want to be middle chain, MIDI channel two, and this one, I want to be MIDI channel one. Make this our focus track. Look what happened. It like records into the focus track, but because it was MIDI channel one for my keyboard, it moves it down to the one that had one selected. So it's not going to do it on the way in. It's almost like it records it, takes all of the data you have and everything that was assigned to channel one, it moves to the one channel one spot. Anything that was channel two gets moved to the two spot. And so let me take you down the rabbit hole of something that gets even more complicated when you're in the demix mode and two of them are set to the same channel like this Abbey Road strings and the Spirit synth. The Spirit one is higher on our channel list, and so it's going to be the one that gets triggered. I'm going to pull this one above it, the Abbey Road. Pull it back down. So now you're starting to see that maybe the system is a little bit wonky, right? It definitely is. If you're having some of these issues, perhaps it's because you have that setting turned on and you have things set to the same channel. Let's do this. Let's just try one more experiment here. I'm going to set these all back to all. And we have all of those record enabled. So back to all they are going whichever one is selected with the focus track. Whoa. So now when you're doing this, it's changing the priority of what is getting the information and when it's getting the information. It's really complicated if you want to have a bunch of different instruments all connected simultaneously. Uh, there are some other things you could do which get a little bit more complicated in the environment, but there's really no reason to. In reality, uh, if you really want to be able to work like this, I think you just have to get used to knowing which thing is turn on or off with the demix, and then keeping track of all your tracks so that they're not duplicating. Now, setting up your external instrument for a MIDI channel can also be really difficult. Right now I've got an old synthesizer connected to this station. It's a Kawai SX240, and I can't choose what MIDI output it is. It's always MIDI output one. So if I wanted to use it with another keyboard, I would have to set the other one to two, three, four, five, all the way to 16. And if I had two instruments which couldn't have different outputs selected, it's pretty rare, but it is possible, as you can see from my instrument, then we would be at a, an impasse and I wouldn't be able to use them simultaneously like this. So that's something to think about. So next time that you have a project open that has a lot of different tracks and for any reason you come through, you might actually find yourself in one of a few different scenarios that could be a little bit of an issue. For instance, 
say I'm just going to draw in some regions here so that way we have an example. Say that I'm editing inside this track right here and maybe I haven't recorded the piano yet. Um, so I've got this one as my focus track. I've done some editing and then I actually come up and record arm my grand piano. I think, you know what? Okay. I just clicked on the R just like I would have done in my previous audio workstation. I'm going to push record here. First off, I think, wait, why am I not hearing my piano? And I just recorded MIDI into this other track and nothing went up there. So that is one key to me that I have the auto demix turned on. So I'm going to turn that off, right? So that's one scenario. Another one, let's do this again. I'm going to, I have the same exact thing going on. This one is the one I have selected. This one is record armed though. Um, but maybe for a minute I have it muted, right? Or something. There's, I've had a scenario a little bit similar to this. And then I stop and I look, I say, wait, what just, why? And I realized that I had the original focus track in record arm and my new one ended up being something totally different. Um, so there are situations where you have to remember before to re you record, instead of just hitting the record button, uh, just hit the track header because that's going to be a way to put it into focus and to be able to record. And it'll put it in that track and you'll be able to hear that sound and it won't accidentally put it someplace else. Okay. Um, am I forgetting anything else? Those of you who have made it to the end of the video and are interested in this topic, is there any other part of this which you still have questions? Leave them in the comments. Um, I thought I recalled from the past a way to turn off the uh, record, enable the focus track, but I couldn't find it on, on this pass. So um, I don't know if it's even still there anymore. It could be that... Um, we're just missing it. Zoom focus track. That's for zooming. That's different. So if there's any other parts of this feature that you're aware of, make sure you leave them in the comments below so that way we can kind of round out the discussion for this particular topic. Okay. Hope you're having a great week and I uh, will talk to you soon.